So we have a property about sign. We have a property about symmetry. The next property I've called dissection. Okay, I'll give you the algebra and then I'll ask you to help me understand why have I called it this. Right? If you have an integral from A to B, a single integral, you can express it as two separate integrals. You can break it into two pieces. And there's lots of ways you can break it, but the particular that this property is about is I can change the boundaries. Let's just say I have another value in between A and B called K. If I integrate R from A to K part way, then I can take over and do the integral from K to B and do the same function. Okay, so what would this look like? Uh, let's just go with this x squared example that we just drew up over here. So if I said, let's make a and b, I don't know, 0 and 4. So wrong color. So what is this saying? If I went from 0 to 4, I could take this whole area, 0 to 4, and treat it as one integral, like here on the left hand side. Or if I want to, I could slice it into pieces and say, well, look, I'm just going to do this part up here. Excuse me. From 0, say, to 2. I don't know. That's a convenient halfway point. doesn't have to be halfway. It could be from 0 to 3 if I wanted. And then I could take over here later on and dissect my area into two pieces. Okay. Now, why is this useful? Well, Sometimes particular values are really nice and convenient to put into a particular function. It just depends on what the function is. Okay? And secondly, sometimes when solving a problem, you end up with multiple integrals, lots and lots of long string of them, and you're like, ah, this is icky. Is there some way I could do less integration? Well, it's sort of like, it's almost like collecting like terms. Do you sort of see that, right? It's like same function, same function, just different boundaries. As long as those boundaries connect, in fact, I'm going to highlight that, so long as there is a continuity between the two intervals, is what we call them, you can combine them into a single integral. Question? If there was a continuity, if it was like A to K and B to B, yep. you just go A to B and K to C. Yeah, you absolutely could. So what Eric was just suggesting was, if I have some other area like this, if I wanted to go, say, for a, let's call that 5, from 0 to 2 and 4 to 5, right? You can see, because it's just areas, it's just shapes, right? What I could do if I wanted is work out 0 to 5 and then take away the green piece, which is the part I don't want. Just take away 2 to 4. That would be fine. These are just shapes. They're kind of like composite figures, if you remember them back from like year 8 and year 9, okay? And you can chop and change them uh, however you please, okay? So long as you use the right numbers. Okay, so that was dissection. All right, two more for you, okay? Um, so you're doing well. This next one here is a weird one. Oops, don't need an equal sign now, okay? What I want to think about is, at the moment, we have only considered integration in a particular direction, namely, from left to right, from left to right. So all along, this whole time, we sort of assumed that this number is smaller than this number. Does that make sense? Like you go from 0 to 4, or 5 to 8, or something like that. So you're progressing from left to right. What would happen if I went in the opposite direction? What would happen if I integrated in the reverse direction? Well, let's think about this, and we'll go all the way back to um, our fundamental theorem of calculus. What does this thing equal to in terms of its primitives? Well. The regular calculus definition of this is um, the primitive of the top value take away the primitive of the bottom value. Do you remember that? F of, we usually would say B, take away F of, we would usually say A. And that's the primitive, of course, capital F, right? But what I've done is I've, um, I've swapped my variables, I've swapped my boundaries and their order. So this is not going to be B and A anymore. This is not my endpoint. This is not my start point. I've switched them. So this is now going to be A over here and B over here. 
Now, how is this related to my regular normal integral that I've been using all the way along here? Well, isn't it your regular interval, your rel regular integral, I, could I should say, but um, in opposite order? Like if I chuck a minus sign out the front, that will switch these two around back the way they're supposed to be, right? Uh, it'll be something like this. Yeah, are you with me? I've just factored out a negative sign. But I know what this thing is. By definition, this is my normal in integral, right? By definition, this is from A to B in my normal order. Does that make sense? So this is kind of weird and strange because just like integration now takes into account, hey, if you're above or below, now your area is something different. It's negative. Well, this is now saying, actually, not just is the position of it different, depending on which way you think about the area, from left to right versus right to left, you get a different answer at the bottom. Okay? Now, I want you to think back to our original metaphor, which will help you understand this. Okay? Think back to the picture we drew that Russell helped us with. What was the illustration I gave you? There's the astronaut, right? Now we imagine the astronaut traveling through space and trying to work out their total distance. And I said something like, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. We'd said something like, what's um, the difference from time one to time three of, and what we have was speed, right? We had their speed. So let me give it a name. Let's call it V for velocity, right? So that velocity function, that's what we integrated, right? Do you remember that? And then we got displacement. So this is from hour one to hour three. And then we came up with some number, I don't know, 160 or something like that. Well, what would it mean for the astronaut? What is the different situation if I said, let's actually reverse our boundaries? What would this mean for the problem? Well, you're not comparing starting from hour one to hour three. You're going, think about this, you're going backwards in time. Does this make sense? You're time traveling from, don't think about you know, the start to the end. Think as if you started at the end and now you've come back. Well, you're not going to be 160 kilometers forward, right? You're going to be 160 kilometers behind because you've just traveled back in time. Does that make sense? So actually, we need this idea of, of negativeness, uh, not just here with signed areas, but also here with the direction that you integrate in, okay?